Hello, hello. Uh, Tyler Bryan here. Uh, you know what? I think I've started this at a very uh, this sort of weird uh, daily stand-up thing at a very weird time in uh, history. Uh, a lot of stuff going on right now, and I feel like I'm the bearer of bad news. I'm not really the bearer of bad news. I'm just an amplifier of it, I guess. And, and I hope one day I can talk about um, unicorns and ponies and all the wonderful um, optimistic things in the world. Um, but for now, let's talk about darkness. Let's talk about interest rates. Let's talk about recessions. Uh, these are the things that are truly impacting us uh, day to day. Uh, right now. So I am, you know, addressing some of these things. And there's uh, a topic that I wanted to talk about today that uh, actually came sort of last week. And it was a letter to founders from Y Combinator. And Y Combinator is, you know, widely regarded as the most sort of credible accelerator program. You can see um, just some of the incredible names that they have uh, funded and uh, have produced many, many um, unicorns, I guess, decacorns. Uh, and because of this, they also sort of in, uh, embrace and they also sort of il illustrate this one, this, this Silicon Valley culture um, uh, of these, you know, grow or die, as, as, as I've seen in uh, a super pumped uh, here, this TV show uh, mentality where you must become um, a billion dollar company and they're funding you to make that happen. And throughout, you know, history, they've had different terms. At one point, I believe it was $20,000 for 6% of the company that was then changed to 125, 125,000 and then has moved uh, a new deal, uh, which I believe offers another 375 or 500,000 at an uncapped safe. And so, um, you know, I have had some friends who have gone through this program. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to, um, you know, <laughs> succeed. There are many YC companies that have failed. Uh, there is a huge um, failure rate in startups as a whole. But it, it, uh, based, you know, in, a, in, in the Y Combinator vein, they are setting you up for success the best way they can, connecting with alumni, and then also sending a deal signal um, to investors that they have vetted and qualified you so that you are um, a great uh, company to invest in. So after a demo day, um, the friction to fundraising is often uh, decreased compared to a company that hasn't gone through um, YC or maybe a less credible uh, accelerator. So this letter itself, um, I can pop up here, uh, is, you know, it's interesting, you, you read this as a, there's some people who are reading this as what YC funded companies. Probably scary enough to get that message. And then there's other people who are reading that, you know, for myself, uh, who are not YC funded companies. And then it's also scary. Uh, maybe even more scary because you don't have the support of YC and no one's really sending you this message. You just come across it on the internet. I will say that there are, you know, just to check myself, there may be some bias as I'm going through this conversation here. I have applied for YC. Um, I've actually gone to the interview process and even, uh, you know, gotten close to getting in, but never um, actually went in. So if I feel, if I sound jaded, I don't think I am, but I just wanted to disclose that bias here uh, as, I, as I walk through this. Um, so they've done a lot of office hours with companies. And this is, you know, I, I, one thing I'll, I'll say I love is, is numbered lists. Uh, I think that in an email exchange or in com communication, it's one of the best ways to com communicate because if you need to respond back, you can just address that with the corresponding number and make sure that the, the information um, is, is well structured and organized so you can continue to go back. And so anyways, love the, love the number um, here. And then just a couple of sort of insights or uh, thoughts that have come out of it. There's also um, a, a, sl a couple slides I'm gonna show you from a Craft Ventures, which is David Sachs' company, with, with, which they shared with, um, with their founders too. And so generally um, they, talking about that, that if you are have have gone through and raised in this climate that was maybe 2020 to 2021 um, that this climate is not no longer existent and it's really interesting because we're getting mixed signals right now there are um, there are funds that are raising significant funds maybe they close those uh, a while ago and are just announcing them now. So there is still continued to be injection of capital and in investors. There's some investors who are saying it's even, you know, it's a great time to invest. There are companies laying people off. Bolt uh, just laid off, I think, 700 people. Uh, Klarna, uh, a bunch of other companies. And I'm guessing it sort of becomes like a little bit of a, 
you know, not for a lack of a better term, a pandemic that actually happens here where once there are some layoffs in one company, another company sees that, validates that this is the right thing to do and it will continue. So there's that side of it as well. And then there are still companies that I'm seeing who, you know, I followed who are raising um, successful rounds. And again, maybe they're just announcing that now or you don't get the behind the scenes of that they lowered their valuation or they you know, did X on those terms to make this happen. Um, so you don't necessarily get that. So it, you're getting a lot of, I would say, conflicting signals right now, but then you are getting uh, a strong signal from Y Combinator, who obviously has a high level oversight and perspective on this and most likely um, some good insight and obviously a reason to put this together. So. A couple common threads that I've heard um, throughout this email, throughout conversations, throughout some of the presentations I've been, been part of is that 24 to 30 months is what you should be looking at from a runway perspective um, because uh, the, the, cause the environment is so volatile right now, that is necessary for you to, um, to survive uh, um, through through that journey without having to raise again. And with that, the goal is to not have to raise again because you're likely gonna take at least a 50% valuation cut. And for uh, most investors, that's, uh, you know, that's not gonna be a ideal scenario who have put money into your company, um, even with their understanding of the circumstances. And it's not ideal from you. You're going to uh, uh, have create problems with those investors. You're gonna dilute your company and you're gonna decrease the valuation of your company and actually impact the employees who are on your team as well as if you're a co-founder or founders, um, you're gonna impact your own uh, sort of equity uh, in the company here as well too. The other signal that we've seen through this has been uh, recently, I talked about it yesterday with Snapchat and other things like there will be a slowdown in buying and companies will look at um, cutting off software um, subscriptions that are not essential to the growth or cost savings of their business. So a lot of these messages are elaborated uh, in this email specifically. I'll share this as a link so you can check it out. And then I just wanted to touch on a note that now has sort of arised, which is, I think, a really interesting question, which is, um, what is Y Combinator's role in this startup correction? And from my experience, what I've seen here has been, so the, yeah, so who's to blame for the bloated early stage valuations of 2021? As someone who's applied for YC, who's building companies and then following other companies the best I can, friends who have gone through this pro, there are companies in all different stages. Maybe they have connections or maybe they just have very good narratives in their story who have been able to get into YC and then raise at a 30 million uh, pre-money valuation immediately after three months after they get out of Y Combinator with maybe no product, no real traction, and nothing but the signal from Y Combinator that they are worthwhile to investing in. And when there was so much capital in the market, and then YC is creating this signal for investment, all those money then pours into these companies. They are overvalued. Um, while YC makes many good bets that turn out to be successful, they also make um, uh, wrong bets too. And uh, while maybe these companies can put together a good narrative or story, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're building a business that is essential, that will grow, that will be uh, successful in the long run. And so um, over the next year, couple years, we're going to see a lot of these companies that raised at super high valuations, super high multiples, they will fail um, and fail um, probably quite spectacularly uh, because of the overvaluation here. And with that, um, when, as YC sets valuations, uh, then then other companies, and even if they're not going through that program or maybe they're second time founders or have um, credibility, they're then also using those valuations as benchmarks for their own raise. So then everything gets pushed up. And we had that same experience where we got some term sheets for our company and they were not matching the expected valuation that we thought based on what we were seeing in the market. We said no to those. Um, and uh, and then that has downstream consequences too. So there are companies that didn't take funding that now probably wish they had took funding, um, even if it wasn't at the valuation that they thought. Then there was companies that took funding at uh, too high of a valuation, which will not be able to return that investment. And they would have to X times their annual revenue to even match the investment at the baseline uh, of like sort of SaaS multiples the way they are now. So 
again, very sort of, uh, you know, interesting time and that signal directly from Y Combinator. Another piece here is this default of Alive, which is, um, you know, there's this idea of can you survive without raising money? There's another variation of on this. Do you have the metrics required to uh, raise that money. Uh, and and then, then you can also sort of consider yourself in that bracket. And I'm gonna pull up a slide here um, from David Kraft's uh, venture um, piece here. Um, and let me see, sorry, this isn't my Slack, so I'll pull this up here. Uh, you can see Lauren, Lauren and I are sharing some links here. But fundraising bar is higher, but still possible. Um, but with that, you need to have sort of these metrics in place to make that happen. So um, if you are in the great, it's still possible, still not an ideal situation to raise money. If you're in the good, again, still possible, but you're gonna have a more difficult time. And then at these metrics, you are definitely in the danger zone. You most likely will not be able to uh, raise money. Um, And if you are, it's gonna be on very poor terms. And then one other note uh, from this uh, is like, be open to lower valuations, which no one is uh, willing to hear. Probably investors aren't liking to say, but you have to give the proper advice in the right time. And then they actually go at the higher level of the 30 months runway. So um, what we're seeing now, as you said, modify your hiring plans, lay off people if necessary, freeze your hiring. We're already seeing this at bigger companies as well too, that we don't necessarily think are that or that we think are immune to some of these things, which we find out isn't true, especially in the environment that we in. Uh, look, talking about a burn multiple, so how much are you burning uh, each month, and then you need to act fast. And so I think we are starting to see now companies maybe not acting at super super fast, but now with all this information, all these signals, this met- message from YC, the layoffs are starting to happen, modifications to the business are happening. Companies are talking about moving towards profitability. The one, I believe the one I'm going to blank on the name here, but the one uh, food delivery company talked about getting towards profitability and pulled out of different countries because their aggressive growth plans just put them at such a risk with their burn rate and then their inability to raise capital. So we are in um, a very interesting. Uh, uh, climate here right now with signals sort of diverging and giving people different insights or thoughts about how they should best proceed. But overall, some of the over- overarching advice has been to, again, increase runway, decrease burn, modify your hiring plans, raise only if you have to and be lo- open to lower valuations if you are and then focus on profitability or at least break even so that you can continue to grow and that this is not your death warrant uh, in this time. So uh, that is uh, my little breakdown of YC's uh, letter to founder, some insights that I've thought through it, and then um, some nice messages from, not some, I guess they're not nice messages, but some insights from Craft Ventures um, and David Sachs there. And then also just some thoughts about why or, or how has YC contributed to the climate that we're in with these super high valuations with companies that might not deserve those? Uh, so uh, keep in, you know, keep uh, following this stuff if you're interested in it. Send me a message. Always love to love to chat about this. And uh, hope everything, despite everything that's going on in the world right now, is well in in your world. And uh, appreciate you checking this out very much.